Have you ever been in the zone? Like when you're so immersed in a game and so fixated on it that everything else seems to just fade away? You're often performing super well in the game and your actions seem to be coming to you almost automatically. Yeah, that the zone. What's with the zone? The zone is a state of mind one enters when they're in perfect harmony with the task they're performing. Psychologists refer to this mindset as flow, or being in flow. This euphoric state of mind was first studied by a psychologist by the name of Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. He defines flow as having the following characteristics. A loss of self-consciousness. While in flow, people have described themselves as being very comfortable and extremely focused on their actions. They often feel as though they can perform better at a given task than they ever had. A sense of self-control. People in flow feel like nothing can stop them and that they're very much in control of their activity. Emerging of action and awareness. People are so focused on their activity that it feels as though their next action comes to them automatically. An altered sense of time. Time flies when you're having fun. It's likely that focus on an activity is so intense that one will very easily lose track of time. Chances are you've been in flow before and are familiar with how it feels, but how does one enter this state of mind? Well, it's a rather complex topic, but it's been said that there are three requisites that must be met. Firstly, your activity must be intrinsically rewarding. In other words, you must be participating in this activity for the sake of itself. If I were to ask you to dig a ditch for $50, you might do that, but you likely won't enter flow. You're doing this task for the money, not necessarily because you enjoy doing it. Oftentimes, we play games because we find them fun and rewarding. This is intrinsic motivation. Secondly, the activity must have a clear set of goals with immediate feedback. You have to know exactly what your goal is and everything you do has to be met with some quick response. The goal of Mario is to reach the flag at the far right of the stage. Even though you don't immediately reach the flag and therefore aren't receiving immediate feedback on that goal, there are tons of smaller goals that need to be accomplished first like jumping over gaps and dodging enemies. These goals are constantly being met immediately and culminate into the ultimate goal of reaching the flag. Finally, and perhaps the most important thing, is that there must be a fine balance of challenge from the activity and skill from the active participant. Think of a game you're really good at, but imagine playing the easiest levels or settings. You might find this boring or relaxing. You probably won't enter flow. Conversely, consider a game you're not particularly good at, and imagine it on the hardest level or settings. This would probably be pretty overwhelming, and you may not be able to handle it. Sixzent Mihal Yi considered this when studying and defining flow, coming up with a graph tracking activity challenge and relative skill. We can use this graph to learn a bit about games. For example, many horror games are about making the player feel weak. Even though a player might not have a low skill in a horror game, they may feel as though they have insufficient skill to perform, causing them to feel anxious. Conversely, a game like Animal Crossing, whose challenge is near non-existent, but still provides a rewarding experience to the player, gives them a sense of relaxation. This doesn't mean flow can't be achieved in either of these games. They can both be immersive for other reasons, but that's a topic for a different video. Flow exists in the top right corner. This is the point at which the game provides a real challenge to the player, but they're able to keep up with it and ultimately enter this mindset. But what about games with a dynamic difficulty, like Tetris? Imagine a really good player of Tetris. For them, they may start in relaxation as the game allows them to warm up. Over time, the blocks fall faster, causing the game to progressively increase in challenge. As they continue, the line would enter control and then flow. But if we extrapolate, it would eventually enter arousal. No matter how good a player is at the game, as long as Tetris continues to get harder and faster, they would get there at some point. Now, just like how the game is dynamic in its challenge, a player may be dynamic in their skill. By pushing themselves hard enough, they can improve during the game. If the player manages to accomplish this, they may re-enter flow. On the other hand, entering arousal may have other effects on the player. Having left flow, a player may feel more self-aware, and their actions may not come to them as easily. They might even and mess up the game, no longer able to play normally, entering a new state of anxiety. One might assume that their skill has gone down, but that doesn't make sense. You're not suddenly worse at Tetris just because you made a mistake, so what happened? Well, recall what I said earlier about the player having a clear goal with immediate feedback. For the entirety of this game of Tetris, the goal has been to keep getting rid of blocks, and the players had a decent amount of space to do it. However, upon making the mistake, the player's goal is no longer to get rid of all the blocks. It's changed to get rid of these blocks. Considering the high speed of the Tetris game and the decreased space through which the player has to work, it makes sense that despite having a high skill in a normal game of Tetris, their skill at fixing this specific mistake may be much, much lower. It's not that the player's skill has gone down on the graph, nor that the challenge has gone up on the graph. Instead, the player has entered a new graph entirely, in which their skill is at a different place, possibly now in anxiety. Because the player's immediate goal has changed, the criteria to enter flow has been altered, essentially landing them not on a new place on the old graph, but on a new graph entirely. From here, they're forced to scramble in an attempt to fix their mistake and try to get themselves back on the first graph. If they fail to do that, it could be game over. In the grand scheme of things, Tetris is a fairly basic game. While the game's challenge is changing frequently, the player's goal isn't. 
Obviously, however, there are some games in which the player's goal is changing frequently. Look at a game like Super Smash Bros. This game is so complex that your immediate goal can be defined by a factor as dynamic as player position. Let's say one player has their opponent in a combo, racking up percentage. They have the upper hand, and they may be in flow on their graph for the goal of maintain this combo. Now let's say their opponent manages to break out of the combo and starts retaliating with their own. Suddenly, the players enter the new graph of break out of this combo. But then perhaps they'll finally break out, smacking their opponent who already has a high percentage from earlier, and now they're flying. Their new goal is keep the opponent off the stage. Every time the player's immediate goal changes, they find themselves on a new graph for that goal where their ability to achieve flow may vary. In a game like WarioWare, the player faces a bombardment of 5 second micro games. These games are extremely short and frequent, so the player's goals are constantly changing. However, these micro games are so simple that a player can quickly become familiar and comfortable with them, and by extension, the goal for each one. At some point, the player will be skilled enough to be able to maintain flow between them. With enough practice facing the various challenges, a player's ability may reach an equilibrium that allows them to maintain flow throughout the entire game even as the short-term goals change. Each individual task melds into what will seem like a single performance, and each place where they could achieve flow melds into a single harmonious meta-flow. One is essentially flowing from flow to flow. Gamer from Game & Wario takes the microgame formula a step further. The player takes the role of a kid playing games when he should be sleeping. At any moment, his mom can come in and catch him, immediately ending the game. The player must play the kid's games on the gamepad while also watching the TV screen to keep track of when mom might surprise you. Not only do you have to keep up with the changing microgames, but you also need to monitor and avoid an additional obstacle at all times. It adds an extra layer to the game's complexity, as your goal can change not just between the microgames, but also at any moment when your mom might show up. Mom is a source of anxiety. She's an anomaly among the challenges in Gamer that the player won't always be able to predict and thus a frequent factor in a player's loss of flow. Staying focused and maintaining flow under these conditions is a matter of overcoming anxiety despite any unpredictability. In the same way that anxiety can break flow, too much relaxation can as well. This is actually a strategy commonly seen in competitive games. In sports, a coach might call a timeout to break the opponent's flow. This might result in their team's flow being broken too though. Players of esports also do this. Some players will perform safe, monotonous maneuvers for extended periods of time in hopes that it will move the opponent from flow into a state of relaxation or even boredom, essentially throwing them off. Smash players like Mewtwo King and Hungrybox have been known to do this by ledge camping. In a sense, players of competitive games not only aim to master the elements of regulating their own flow but also influencing their opponents. So what's the point? Flow is an optimal state of mind when playing a game or performing an activity. This is because the player feels accomplished for performing at their best in a task of relatively high challenge. There's more to it than that though. It's been said by Dr. Sixentmihalyi that maintaining flow throughout an activity is the secret to happiness, and who doesn't love being happy? So the next time you find yourself playing a game, see if you can get yourself into the top right corner, because it's that zone, the zone, that you'll find yourself performing at your best. And that's what's with the zone. Thanks for watching. To hear more on Flow, you can watch Sixent Mihaly's TED Talk on it here. Or if you want to check out more game analysis, you can click that video there where I talk about the social implications of cheating in games. To stay up to date on what's with games, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Twitter.